get an accounting job and like work my way up. And uh, that was it. Right. And I started to do that. I worked as a, like an accounting manager slash like project manager for construction companies for a few years. And then um, one day I actually got fired. <laughs> Hey, everybody, it's Ben Robinson. This is the I Love Bookkeeping show, and I'm excited to be with you today. I'm also excited about our guest, and we'll get to that here in just a moment. But hey, all of these shows for I Love Bookkeeping are on our site, ilovebookkeeping.com. We also have our show notes. We have an application in case you want to be a guest on the show. We would love to have the opportunity to chat with you. Uh, there is a be a guest application right there on ilovebookkeeping.com, as well as information about all of our courses. Now, today, we always, or at least try to always have a guest with us so that we can see the life through their eyes as a bookkeeping professional and talk about their challenges, the opportunities that they have in front of them and seeing how we can help them. And today is no different. I've got a great guest with us. She's 27 years old from Southern California, beautiful Southern California. She says that she's been a numbers nerd since the day she was born. Uh, she loves working with uh, wildlife rescues and animals. And her matter of fact, her employee, Brody, who's also uh, pulls double duty as her dog, has been employee of the month for the last four months. The name of her business is Clarity Bookkeeping. Welcome to the show, Brooke Swan. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Thanks for having yeah. me. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Um, all right. So Southern California is just an awful place to have to live, right? Oh, it's terrible. Uh, every time I go out there, I'm like, I see why people live here, right? Yeah. It's just, it's a special place. Um, <laughs> home is a special place. Are you from there originally? Yeah, yeah I've, uh, I've been here my whole life and I can't really, um, imagine going anywhere else. I don't think I'm, I'm built for any cooler climates than this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny when people complain about the cool weather out there, I'm like, um, this is just like perfect paradise for me right here. So yeah. uh, Sa San Diego is my ultimate weather destination, right? Yeah. It's perfect down there. But... 75 degrees always. So. Mm -hmm. Well, good. So let's talk about your trajectory. Um, I know the end of the story, but let's talk about, why in the world did you decide to become a bookkeeping professional at 20, I guess it was 26 years old. What, what made you go into this crazy profession of ours? Um, so it's kind of a, a long story, I guess, but, um, so I went to, you know, I went to school, I got my degree. Um, and I always like just grew up thinking I was going to, you know, get an accounting job and like work my way up and, uh, that was it. Right. And I started to do that. I worked as a, like an accounting manager slash like project manager for construction companies for a few years. And then, um, one day I actually got fired, <laughs> which, oh, wow. uh, yeah, which was weird because I'd never been fired before, um, in my mm -hmm. entire life, but I got fired, but it was also kind of the same time I like stumbled into this like whole entrepreneurial world that I didn't even know was out there. And, um, and I actually, I started day trading. So I day traded for a couple of years and I liked it, but it was never super, um, like fulfilling. And so right. like during that time, I always knew like I wanted to like have a business or do something. I thought about buying businesses and nothing ever really stuck. Like I couldn't find anything that sounded good. And, um, yeah. And then one day I think I was just Googling and I, I stumbled across, um, that I stumbled across a bookkeeper business launch and I was like, this makes sense. This is perfect. This is something I could do because I always loved numbers. Like I, I loved it. And I felt like, you know, working at a, like for a, an employer is, it's always really limiting, you know, because you can only do what you can do. And it's really hard to like try and improve or change things because it's not your business. And I was like really struggled with that. Cause I'd always have ideas to like make things better. So I right. found this and I just, um, I just dove in. <laughs> right. Yeah. Feet right. First. Yeah. That's awesome. And how long have you been doing this, Brooke? Uh, I think my business is um, like it's about officially a year old. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you're into it. And how many clients do you now serve? Oh, okay. So this one's a tricky one. I don't know how to answer this question, but well, approximately. Right. So no, I wrote it out. Um, okay. Somewhere between 15 and actually 17, but it's tricky. Um, so I have about 12 monthly clients, but two of those are actually other BBL members. So right. I do some work for them. And then between those two businesses, there's, I work on four of their clients books. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah. I, yeah, like, I don't know. I'm like, you count them as one or two or, uh, yeah. So we'll say somewhere around 15. 
Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Are you working full time in this business? Do you do anything else other than your business? Uh, I do work full time in this business, but I do also have like a weekend uh, bartending job that I've been trying to get out of. But um, I don't know. It's a uh, it's such like easy little side income, and so sure. And uh, and I only do it on a Friday Saturday night, so it works with my bookkeeping schedule. Um, you know, no problem. But right. Yeah, but yeah, I'm I pretty much do this uh, Monday through Friday. So you're a go getter. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, you know, if you're working, have your own business and working on the side. Yeah, you're you're definitely a go getter. So uh, I love that. That's one of the the key characteristics of a successful entrepreneur is just that go getter attitude uh, or or spirit about you. So that's great. All right, so you've got these clients. Um, where where is it that you want to go with your business? Like, if you were to lean out three years from now, what would it look like? Oh. Um... So that's a tough one. I actually, so I love, like, I love doing the bookkeeping. Like, I love it. Right. <laughs> um, but I can see, especially as I get busier and busier, like, I can see myself maybe getting burned out of doing all the daily tasks, you know, eventually. Um, so it's hard to, because right now, like, I would love to just do this just solo by myself and just do everything. Um, but I know eventually that's going to, I'm going to hit, like, some kind of plateau. Um so I think I would like to learn how to step out of like my, my bookkeeper shoes or at least a majority of the work I do. And, um, you know, really train like a, a team to just run my business efficiently so that there's minimal, um, minimal day to day tasks that I would have to be involved in and that I can okay. have more, more time on my hands and maybe, um, you know, more opportunities to do other things as well besides just right. the bookkeeping business. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so income wise, obviously you probably have some goals that are in there at this point. Is it about creating more income for like paying the bills or is it more like, Hey, I just wanted to grow this now. If kind of my, my needs are met financially, it's just kind of growing it for uh, growing sake. Um, it's, a, I think it's still a little bit of both. Like I still, um, yeah, I still, I'm getting closer to the goals that uh, like the, the income goals that, um, I've wanted to hit. Uh, I did hit my client goal, which I, I realized because I wanted to get 15 clients my first year of business. And so I was really pumped when I did the math. I was like, oh, I did it. Heck yeah. <laughs> there you go. But, um, yeah, no, I'm still trying to definitely grow the income level. My my goal is that I really want to increase like my average uh, monthly client rate. Because mm-hmm. um, ideally, like I really only want to take on really big clients um, and maybe have fewer of those. Um, and I still, I don't know, I, I did the math and I kind of figured out that like, you know, say I took on 30 clients and they were all, we'll say like thousand dollar a month clients. That's 30 grand a month. Right. And I could mm-hmm. pay a couple people with some really good salaries to help out with that. And I think that would be really awesome. Okay. All right. Good. Well, and I think we'll come back to that when we start talking sure. about the <laughs> challenge and opportunity there. Uh, so, uh, do you serve any specific niche? Uh, sort of, um, it's not super specific, but, um, I try to only service like higher end service based businesses. Gotcha. Um, and more specifically, like, I think, you know, I always hear you talk about like niches or sometimes people. And I think my niche is more in the, the business owners that I serve more than I suppose like the industry. Like right. I love working with other business owners that are kind of similar in like age to me, you know, like late twenties or to like mid thirties. Um, and they're usually just like, I don't know, like kick-ass business owners. Like they're really Mm -hmm. good at what they do. They know how to run their business They're super like creative and, and motivating and inspiring. And so I have a lot of those clients actually, which is great. And I love it because I feel like it kind of counterbalances me because that's still something I'm working on is being a, better business owner. And so it's, I love working with people that are, are good at that. And I can kind of watch and, and take notes and see what they're doing. Oh, okay. Any specific industries that stand out that you really enjoy working with or in, in your service base? Or is it just kind of all over? It's kind of all over. I think the ones I enjoy more are definitely more related to the people rather than yeah. the actual industry. Yeah. Well, that's awesome because we always say, Bookkeeping is first and foremost a relationship business and you are building that clientele off that relationship, which is huge because people don't cancel relationships. They cancel transactions. 
And so you're doing it the right way. So kudos to you there, bro. We get you, uh, you got a gold star, one gold star. And we're only uh, nine minutes into this. right yay. Now. So, <laughs> yay, There you go. All right. So cool. What's your favorite thing about having your own business? Um, pro- you know, it's probably the same thing that most other people say. And it's, uh, it's the freedom. Um, right. Like I love coming to work in my pajamas every day and <laughs> you know, I love being able to like, you know, I can kind of stop and start as I please, you know, if I want to you know pick up and go work at the beach, I can go do that or, you know, go meet up with family like for lunch or if I need to run errands and I can just kind of work my schedule or I can work my, uh, yeah, I can pretty much work my life into my schedule and it's, uh, it's just really nice having that flexibility. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, now that you have worked for yourself, would you ever go back to working for someone else? I don't think I could. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't want to say never. Uh, I guess it all depends on the opportunity at hand, but I just can't see it. Um, right. But it's so funny because I remember when I was uh, like in college and, and I was working and my dad always told me, he's like, bro, like, why don't you just run your own business? Like have your own business. And I was like, no, dad, I don't want that. That's too much work. <laughs> like yeah. a lot of stress and responsibility and this and that. And then now it's funny because I can't see it any other way. Yeah. I, I, I Like you, I, I think that I'm unemployable. Uh, number one, I don't think that anybody would put up with my stuff for about 10 minutes and I would get fired. Um, but now that I've tasted that freedom, um, it's, it's sweet, right? I mean, it's, but it's a challenge too, to run a business. Um, and let's, let's, let's kind of talk about that because we want everybody to know that starting your own business, whether it's bookkeeping or otherwise, it's not all puppy dogs and rainbows and or unicorns, right? Like what has been the biggest challenge or one of the biggest challenges that you have faced over this last year of building your business? Oh my gosh. Um, there's been a ton. Yeah, <laughs> It's sure. like a really pinpoint one, you know, I think most of it just, you know, not knowing what you don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's been so many times where I've run into issues or situations where I just didn't know either how to solve the problem or I didn't know what the answer was. And um, I didn't know what the next step was, but I mean, I feel like, you know, having the, like the support that we have in the BBL group and um, you know, and with prosper and, and all the other like contacts I've made like over the last year has been helpful and, kind of overcoming those challenges, but there's just been so many. (laughs) It's hard to really name one, you know? Yeah. Have you felt that you have not only just like built this business over the last year, but you've also kind of grown like as a, as a person in your abilities? Oh yeah. Um, a hundred percent. I'm probably a, actually, no, I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a very different person now than I was, um, than I was a year ago. Uh, right. And it's probably uh, mostly due to my business and um, all the learning I've done through it and, and all the yeah. other good things it's brought me. So, oh, yeah. That's what uh, so many people find, and I find, or I found, and I continue to find is that, you know, you mentioned, you know, there's been so many problems or so many things, but it's, it's really, these are opportunities. They're like, it's like going to the gym and like, okay, I can do that exercise now and it doesn't hurt. Now I'll go do this other exercise. And oh my gosh. Uh, here and you keep you keep you know kind of going to a plateau, getting better, and then coming to a new challenge. And there's always something around the next corner. Yeah, exactly. Like nothing ever, you know, detrimental. But um, they're just always new, new learning curves. Um, but they're good yep. learning curves. Once you learn it, then you can move mm-hmm. on to the next thing you got to learn. <laughs> there ain't no help desk, right? It's it's you. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, so let's talk about specifically your bookkeeping business. Like what's your favorite activity or activities to do in your business? Like you just do it all day. You could get lost in it. Oh boy. Um, I actually really like cleanups. (laughs) Okay. I like, I, I binge on those. Um, like, I mean, like it's kind of, uh, it's contradictory because I kind of hate them too. (laughs) They're, uh, it's a love hate. They're like so tedious and problematic and you fix one problem just to, figure out a whole new surface of problems has, you know, arose. And, um, but I love it. Cause I can, t- I don't know. There's something about like, I can just sit on my computer for like eight hours and just totally just dive in and start fixing stuff and messing around. And, um, yeah, I love it. But then you get frustrated because sometimes it, you can't finish those things in a day. It usually takes quite a few days <laughs> or mm-hmm. months, you know? 
Um, right. But yeah, I just, yeah, I love saying things balance and, you know, probably like most other bookkeepers on here, uh, sure. you know, like seeing when everything's reconciled and all the books are closed and it's a nice feeling. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. It is a love hate um, when you look back on that. Uh, so what, so that you could, is it fair to say that you could do that all week long and you would just be happy? Yeah. <laughs> Um, Maybe with something else mixed in there yeah, that you enjoy doing. Probably need some variety on that one, but um, yeah, I could do that. I could do that a lot of the time, and I and I'd probably be happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what's something about your what's something in your bookkeeping business that you don't like to do that you put off? I put off probably my uh, my business owner <laughs> like duties more than more than I think anything bookkeeping related. Um, okay. Yeah, that's kind of been my struggle uh, is, you know, I guess stepping out of the, the bookkeeper shoes and into the business owner shoes. And, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. I'm still surprised that I've made it this far um, with that approach. But, um, yeah, I'm just, you know, it's my, this is my first business. And even though I've been in management positions before in different um, different jobs, it's not quite the same as when you actually – are like steering your own ship. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, when it comes to like the, the marketing and the advertising and, and the scaling and, you know, even putting, you know, processes and procedures in place um, that all that stuff gets either pushed off or it's, you know, it makes it to like the bottom of the list um, right. compared to all the other, you know, like to, to the day to day tasks that I do. Uh, right. So that's been my struggle is stepping into those shoes. Gotcha. Is it more from uh, I don't I don't know how uncertainty, or is it just more from uh, I don't like doing that stuff. I don't. I think it's I don't like doing that stuff. Okay. Probably a little. I don't know too. But sure. Yeah, it's just not. It's just not something I think that I enjoy. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Everybody has their own thing, right? The things that they like, the things that they don't, and uh, we'll we'll come back to that here in just a second. Um. But real quick, let's talk about like, where do you want to take this business? If you were to say, you know, uh, where, where do you want to go? Like what, how many clients are you going to have in three years? How many um, or team members do you want to have? Have you, have you stepped back to really think about that in detail? Uh, a little bit. I haven't gone out three years, uh, but I have gone out about to like the next year. And right. by this time next year, I want to at least double my clients. Like I want to at least have um, 30 monthly clients and probably um, I think I want to take on two, uh, like outsourced, uh, bookkeepers. Um, gotcha. and then maybe, you know, down the line, I'm always thinking about, you know, how to scale it, but I'm also kind of playing it by ear to see what fits at the time. But, right. um, you know, I think maybe down the line, it'd be cool to, I don't know, just really scale the business. And, if, and most of my clients are pretty local. Um, but you know, if maybe I could start widening that reach um mm-hmm. you know i could scale it faster but i need to make sure i have everything in place before it scales instead of uh doing it the other yes. way around <laughs> smart Trying. yes yeah i uh, know ask me how i know yeah you're very smart to do it that way rather <laughs> than to go oh i got all this stuff and now i got a big mess on my hands and so yeah ask again how do, how do i know about that because i've made all those things well that's good. One thing, you know, I, I encourage pretty much on all of these is to get very clear about your vision from the standpoint of like, here's the life that I want to lead in three years. Here's what my business is going to do to support that rather than saying, here's what my business is going to do. Now, how do I fit my life around that? And, you know, with the, the passions that you have outside of bookkeeping, with family obligations and all that stuff is really getting crystal clear on what a day in the life of Brooke looks like in a year, two years, three years. Um, What does a week look like? What is your vacations? How much are you working in the business? Because we need to be able to have a set of guidelines for decision making, right? Because if we say, Hey, I just want to grow to have double my clients. That's good. But what is that really going to do? What does that mean? Because I always push back and say, you really don't want double the clients. You want the revenue and what that's going to do and what's that going to do for your life. And that's really what you want. And then, then we go back and say, all right, does that mean that I need to double my client load or do I need to increase the services that I'm offering? And how's that going to fit into my life? Because otherwise we have a recipe for chaos on our hands. 
So the fact that you've thought out a year, that's kudos to you there. I would just encourage you to get very specific about what that means, a day in the life, a week in the life, a year uh, in your business. And so now you have some sort of lens to make decisions through. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. No, it does. Yeah. That would be good. Um, well, that's awesome. I can't uh, wait to hopefully do a follow-up with you in a year and hear about that doubling of clients. <laughs> All right. So we've alluded to it a couple of times. So let's kind of shift over to the opportunity, the challenge that is in front of you, which why don't you kind of tee that up, which you kind of already have. But what's the struggle that we're going through right now? Um, So I guess the struggle is that, you know, I wonder if since I do love the bookkeeping side of the business so much, I'm like, should I should I hire someone to I essentially run the business for me and kind of do all the bigger picture stuff. Um, but, uh, but then I'm wondering like, is that even something you could do? Like it's not their business. What incentive do they have to, you know, perform those, like those duties. Right. Um, or do I figure this out and try and, and step back and um, as a bookkeeper and, and step into, into the owner's shoes. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Um, and, you know, that's so there's no right or wrong answer here. Right. So first of all, this, but it, every business and bookkeeping is no different. There's only really three main activities. There's marketing, there's operations, and then there's the business running admin, whatever you want to call it. You know, the behind the scene machine, behind the scenes machine. That's really hard to say they're together. <laughs> um, those are the three parts. So out of those marketing operations and administration, which ones would you say are your strong suits? Probably operations and okay. admin, maybe. Okay. All right. So what you always want to do if you're bringing somebody on, and I don't think you're to this point, but you would want to bring somebody on who complements your weaknesses, mm-hmm. right? So in this case, it would be more the marketing, but I think then the side of the admin and kind of growing the business, there's something there too. But one of the things that distinguishes us as a business owner and an entrepreneur is, is number one, our ability to market and get clients, whether that's us individually or somebody else or a team. That's a huge deal right there. And it's not something that you should outsource. Right. I always have people where they're saying, you know what, I'm just going to outsource my marketing. I'm like, no, I mean, there may be a time in which you can do that. But at first, you don't want to outsource marketing because that's a key element of your business. And you can't trust that to anyone else because no one else has a vested interest in your business other than you, unless you have a partner, right? So never do that. But looking at this, right, is to say, okay, I really like operations. So you're really good at that. So the first hire that you make is probably somebody who could help you with the other areas of the business that aren't so much where you want to go. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Where, now, um, okay, so really thinking about the direction of your business, going back to that vision that you have for it, um, because you've you've just been in it a year, right? And so you're at a plateau or you're at a point in your business where most people don't get to till three or four years down the road. And they've got a little bit more perspective, but you've had this really quick growth, right? You got the 15 clients in a year, so kudos to you there. But now you haven't had that time to kind of settle in, so to speak, because you've just been on this rocket trajectory. So yeah, kind of get that? Yeah, I'm definitely... Um... That's definitely where I'm at right now. Uh, you know, I feel like um, like the growth has been steady and quick, which is like fantastic. But, you know, I feel like I haven't had a lot of, um, what do you call it? I haven't had like a lot of downtime uh, to really work on, like I said, like putting the processes and procedures in place. And it's because it's kind of like, okay, once all my, you know, clients are on a, like a, a steady uh, workflow every month, then I get a new client that comes in and a new project. And so all my attention goes there. And I feel like I just haven't, you know, with the, you know, where I'm at now with my workload, um, like, I think I like I can handle it myself for right now. But I know I'm, I'm really getting close to that point where I'm not going to have enough time to handle all the clients, especially if they keep coming in at the rates that they have been coming in. Gotcha. Okay. So here, here's an action item for you, Brooke, I want to encourage you to do. I want you to s- look out the next two weeks and to schedule four one-hour sessions with yourself mm-hmm. where you do nothing but think about your business, think on your business. Okay. Get rid of the cell phone. Get rid of the computer. It's you, your thoughts, maybe a pad of paper or something to write on. But just thinking about your business and going in there is like asking yourself the question, what does it look like in a year from now? 
where do I want this to go? Um, there's a, a great book by a, a guy by the name of Cameron Harold called Vivid Vision. And it's, it's pretty simple, but it's basically saying, think out three years and what does your business look like? Whether it's just you, whether you have a team, but what does it feel like? Like if you were walking around, if you had a physical office or a virtual office, it doesn't matter. What do things look like? But I want you to schedule these four one hour sessions to just think about your business, to work on your business, to be intentional about working on your business. Because otherwise, if we don't schedule first things first, as uh, Stephen Covey says in Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, if we don't schedule those things, life gets in the way, business gets in the way, cleanups get in the way, and we're just exhausted, right? When that happens, I would encourage you to to schedule these one hour sessions when you are at your mentally most sharp level. Like you probably know, Hey, for me, like an hour after I get up and I don't know if that coincides with the second cup of coffee or what, (laughs) but like an hour after I get up and then for the next four hours is when I'm at my sharpest. So I, during that time do very high level activities, right? Like this, we're doing a, a, a podcast recording. Um, I'll do writing during that time. I don't, you know, answer emails and Facebook posts during that time because not that those aren't important. They are, but it doesn't require a lot of mental activity on my part. So I would encourage you also to schedule that when you're at your sharpest and just be alone. It's scary, right? It's kind of like meditating. You're scary. You're like, okay, what do I think about? I'm so used to doing stuff and you got to kind of let that go and just really start thinking. This is the start. And what, what eventually you want to do is to schedule these, you know, two or three one hour sessions with yourself a week Mm -hmm. to where you're just working on your business. But you got to be intentional about that because otherwise it never gets done. Yeah. Yeah. I've definitely, um, I've attempted that. (laughs) Like I I have that, uh, I actually have that task in my, in my calendar every week um, to, I just call it, you know, business brainstorming. And I, so I told myself, I tell myself I'll do it every Wednesday and Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. But I should probably be more um, more adamant about that. Yeah, we we all should. Right. So a lot of times I have to go back and listen to these podcast recordings or even worse. One of my teams will say, well, remember you said this on the podcast. I'm like, please don't remind me of the things that I should do. That's great. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we all have to be intentional about that um, because, look, you've never done this before. Right. When I started, I'd never done it before. We're making it up as we go. Yeah. You know, and that's a great thing. And it's a paradox, right? Because it's a great thing. I love that. But it's kind of like your cleanup thing. It's a love hate relationship. It's a yin and yang. Mm-hmm. And the very thing that we love and crave is the very thing that sometimes gets in our way. And I think that what this is just doing is just retraining your mind to think about your business. To, and eventually what this will do is, you know, start getting to the point where you're going, all right, well, this is what my vision is for my business. These are the things that I need to start doing, right? I maybe need to create, I don't know what this is, but maybe I need to create an automated marketing funnel to bring in clients. Maybe I need to really get my processes defined. Maybe I need to focus on hiring this, uh, my first hire, right? Getting that person on and working on these high level things. Um, there's an activity and I, I, I know that everybody that listens probably gets sick of me saying these activities, but they only work every time. So that's why I always encourage people to do them. But it's to really do a task audit is to, you know, to list every single thing that you do in your business. You know, go back over your calendar, look at your to-do lists, but list out every single activity that you do, right? Answering emails, answering Facebook posts, doing cleanup work, logging on to QuickBooks, handling the bills, blah, 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 listing all of these things that you do. Okay. And then after that, put out beside those, what's a, what's an hourly rate equivalent on that? So, for instance, uh, entering data from a bank statement, that's like $20 an hour work. Don't get too caught up in that, right? That's $20 an hour at work. But you going and meeting with a prospective new client that could be $1,000 a month, that's probably like $500 an hour work, right? And what we want to do is to put a dollar amount beside. So I always just say, you know, use like $10, $50, $100, $500, $1,000 an hour type of work. And people are like, there's no way I can get $1,000 an hour. And I'm like, bull. If you go and land that client that's $1,000 a month, that's $1,000 an hour work that you get into. But we're listing all the tasks, and then we're assigning a dollar amount. And then we're going out to beside them and go, which one of these are my, what Dan Sullivan calls, unique abilities? 
like the things that you love doing, you're baller at, and you could do them all day long and you would just be happy as a lark. And what we're trying to do here is to find those three, four, five unique abilities, the things that you do in your business that are going to fuel you, fuel you. They're going to make you excited to be in the business. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other things, you know, you start to go, okay, well, th there's unique abilities, unique abilities, which are things that you're excellent at. You could do all day. Uh, then there's excellent, which are things that you're really good at, but you could, it's mas or minas, right? You could take it or leave it. it it's, it's just there, but you're really good at it. And then there's things that you're adequate at uh, or competent at. And then there's things that you're incompetent at. Um, and being able to start at the bottom at the incompetent things, which may only be one or two, and then working your way up through competent things to get those off of your plate. Right. Um, that's one thing that you can do inside of this, but just figuring that out. But at the same time, you know, one thing I would also encourage you to do during those hours is to acknowledge what you have already done. Because if you're anything like me, you're always looking at where you want to go. And we're never acknowledging what you have done to get to this place. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, right. You're always like, well, I could have been this. I could have done that. No, you should say, look, there's very few people in the entire world who could start a business and have 15 clients and be in the position that you're in in, in a year. Like, And looking back and acknowledging and being grateful for, and this gets into my woo-woo speech here, but being just acknowledging what you have done, what a badass you are. And, you know, that, that helps to, to kind of build my confidence and to be grateful. I, I think that those two things yet woo woo are what have changed our business, changed me as a person, changed our business wholesale. Yeah, I agree. And, and but we seldom do that. Yeah. We, uh, um, we should definitely take more time to do that. I'd, uh, yeah. Yeah. It dawns on me every now and then sometimes, you know, I guess where, you know, where I'm at now, uh, compared to a year ago and it still is like, really that happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I don't even really believe it or, or know how it happened, but here we are. Yeah. And you know what, a year from now. So these challenges will be behind you, or at least you will have made great strides and in, in putting them almost behind you. And then there'll be a new one. And that's what I love about ownership. Business ownership is that you're never done. <laughs> you're, you're never formed. You're always forming. Um, but you know, and, and so I would start off with that, uh, you know, just thinking about uh, taking a pad of paper or electronic means to write, just make sure you can't communicate with the outside world. Um, and just saying, Hey, this is what I did, you know? Okay. I, I signed up for BBL. Okay. I got my license or I got my, you know, my business set up, my entity. I opened a bank account. I mean, these little things just going, look, these are all the things I did. Then I, I went to that first client pers pers prospective client meeting. And I was scared to death, yet I did it anyway. And just all the different things and acknowledging. And it starts to build this confidence in you, not to brag or be a boaster, but just because you've done a lot. Yeah. And you need to acknowledge yourself for, for doing all that you've done. I think that's definitely the, uh, um, you know, the, the catch of, I guess, being like an entrepreneur. You're just always, you know, you're always trying to get to that next step, right? You're always trying to... To, to see the next um, or get to the next vision. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, that's, that's ambition. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's you being the go getter. Um, but it's also taking that time to reflect because that is going to give us confidence uh, to get us to that next level. And um, so the biggest thing I would just tell you is to be intentional about scheduling that time, th those hour blocks. I like to use what's called the Pomodoro technique where I, uh, it's, you can Google it. It's, there's a free result, but basically it's, there's a, a kitchen clock called the Pomodoro for cooking, right? It's 25 minutes and you set it and you go and think and brainstorm or whatever for 25 minutes. And then you take a five minute break and then you do another 25 minute session and that's your hour, right? That's two 25 minute sessions there just to kind of think, take a break in the middle to kind of give yourself some smelling salts because you're doing high brain activity and it's hard to go for a solid hour. Right. Yeah, that's a great idea. I would also tell you to, uh, uh, and I had the conversation with Jackie Anthony, who's in SoCal too. She's in LA. Um, 
I had a conversation with her and I was like, make this a special place where you go, where your body tells you when I'm here, I am doing my working on business. That could be the beach, you know, it could be, you know, but somewhere physically separate from where you do your work. Right. So you're scheduling not only the time, but you're scheduling a specific place. You know, where's your play? Is it being by the water, you know, listening to the surf and the sand? I don't guess you listen to the sand, but hey, <laughs> if I drink enough, I can listen to the sand. Oh, yeah. You, uh, you can hear the sand then. Oh, yeah. That's right. It talks to me. <laughs> no, but you're getting to that special place. So, you know, hey, I'm here. Your body is telling you that this is different mind time, right? Different location, uh, a place that you feel, you know, at ease. Uh, doing it when you're at your highest brain wave activity, when you're at your best and being intentional about that is, I, I think that all of that is key. Now, in terms of like what you talk about to yourself and what you work on, you know, I think that that comes with these first conversations that you do, that you have with yourself, creating this vision, asking yourself, okay, this is my vision. This is where I am today. How do I connect those two? How do I get from here? where I am today to where I want to be in a year, in two years, in three years. And that's working on your business. And I think that that will really, that'll move the needle for you. It's not an easy thing. It's not a, oh, Ben told me this one little hack and now it's over with. It's, sorry, it's not that way, right? It never is. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I should definitely start uh, implementing a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of most of the times when I have these conversations with myself or when I have it with others, it's not um, it's not a big epiphany or something. We, it's something that we knew inside. We're like, oh, yeah, I should, you know, just like starting this podcast. I had somebody tell me that you need to start the podcast. Oh, yeah, I knew that. But it took me going and paying somebody and traveling uh, on an airplane to make me have to do it. Right. But I already knew that. Um, but, you know, really. And it's also realizing that you are the uh, you're the cruise director here. If you want to do the bookkeeping and keep that up in operations, you can do that, right? If you want, I mean, there is no right or wrong answer. There mm -hmm. is only what does Brooke want? What do you want to do? Where do you want to go with this business? What's going to charge you? What's going to make you excited to, that your feet hit the floor in the morning? You're like, holy crap, it's Monday morning. Yes. You know, and it's not Sunday night where we have our traditional job where we're like, oh my gosh, I got to get up in the morning and go. And, uh, you don't want that. And the way to avoid that is to do the things that are your unique abilities and to create the business that you want and know that there is no right or wrong way. There's your way. I think, uh, you know, the other thing I struggle with too is that you know since you know we're from a one-man show right now and I, I do everything it's I almost uh worry about okay say I brought someone in to even just help me with emails I'm like well how can they help me with emails when these people are trying to contact me you know what I mean mm -hmm. um and or I don't know you know when I or if they I had like a, a VA take you know uh calls from you know prospective clients or whatever I'm like how how would I be able to ensure that the, you know, the message that they're delivering is the same message I would deliver. And, um, that's you know. processes right there. That's processes, <laughs> gotcha. you know, and training people up. And when you do that, so going back to that task audit, mm -hmm. what's the lowest hanging activity that you can easily tell somebody else how to do and create a little procedure for. And you know, you might go, well, that's only, uh, you know, 10, 20 minutes a day for me to do that. Yeah. Well, there's 10 to 20 minutes a day that you just got back off of one task. And then you say, all right, well, what's the next one? Right. And you start with a little, uh, start with a VA, start with the little tasks and then start building from there. And you're not committing to an employee. You're not committing to a lot of hours. You can get a VA for as little as an hour a week. Right. And they're going to help you tremendously. But it kind of starts rather than just saying, hey, I'm going to go hire a VA. We got to start with this task audit. We got to nail those. And, and by the way, this is a great time for you to start documenting those procedures is right before you hand it off, you know, recording, doing the screen share, the things that we've talked about here on these podcasts, um, just going through and creating those processes as needed and documenting that and then then doing quality control making sure that you're, that he or she, your VA is 
answering those emails like you would want to, answering the phone calls as you would want to, doing the things according to your processes, and then helping you to improve those too. So yeah, and at some point though, it's just a just it's just jumping off the high dive, right? It's just like going, okay, I'm not ready, but here it goes. And then some challenge is going to come up and then you'll fix it and then you'll move on. Right. But it's, it goes back to uh, frozen, let it go. I won't sing the song, but <laughs> you got to let that stuff go. Yes. Yeah. That's probably, um, that one is probably the hardest part. And I'm sure other people probably feel that as well. You know, huh. yes, every, <laughs> every person, right. Yeah. Um, and that's why we don't start like one of the biggest mistakes that I see uh, bookkeepers making when they make a first hire of another bookkeeper and just like want to turn clients over to them. And that's a recipe for disaster. And that's just a wholesale. So we don't do that. We start with a task and we just off are offboarding one task. And once you do that and you get a couple of them off your plate, you're like, it becomes a game. It becomes fun. And it also enables you to stop doing those things that just drain you of energy. Right. They could be easy, simple, but they just you hate them. Right. So getting rid of those so that you can focus more and more time on those things that are unique, that that you enjoy. And that honestly, at the end of the day, provide a lot more value to your clients. Right. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. OK, well, let's let's start to wrap this up. So what's your action item based upon our conversation here today? Um, so I'm going to schedule the four one hour sessions uh, in the next two weeks to sit down and think about my business. And um, I've actually, I've started that task audit, uh, but there's still probably a lot more I, I need to do. I don't think I ever finished it. Um, so I'll go back and work on that task audit. Okay. And uh, I need to start really sitting down and taking the time out of my week to get those uh, processes in place for when I bring on people to my team. Okay. Uh, do you, do you do, are you a to-do list person like me right here? I'm showing uh, Brooke my to-do list. Are you a to-do list person? Oh my gosh, I am. My, uh, it's funny. Okay. My friend was here uh, earlier this or last week. She was trying to help me organize some stuff. And on my to-do list, it, there was a task that said, create another to-do list. And <laughs> I was yes. like, I, uh, I was like, I need to start uh, putting all my to-do list just in one place and not all over the place. So yes, I am mm -hmm. a to-do list person. Okay, so here's another activity. When you're doing that, and I always do my to-do list, you know, for the next day, that's like my last activity. I kind of look back over the previous day and then, or you know, that day. Anyway, I always put down like I or O beside every to-do task and to say, this just helps me to say, okay, I is for working in the business. That's a task that's working in the business. And then O is working on the business. So for instance, you know, Reconciling, you know, uh, Sally's bank statement that's working in the business, uh, spending that one hour thinking about my business. Obviously, that's working on my business. But what you're going to find most likely and go back and look at some of the to do lists from last week is that probably all of the tasks were working in your business. And it's just it, it really doesn't. Only thing it does is it makes you aware. And then you start to say, huh. All right. Well, what's then you start to say if there's no working on my business activities. What is one working on my business activity that I could do tomorrow? All right. Start asking yourself this. It doesn't have to be hours and hours. It could be 10 minutes. Right. Uh, but what is working on your business and working on also when, and when I say working on business, I also talk about working on my personal growth, my personal development. I consider that to be the same thing. Right. Um, you know, reading for me is huge. You know, Warren Buffett, a guy who has a little bit of money and knowledge and experience in this sort of thing, I believe he reads three to four hours a day during his workday, not outside of the workday. Like, like that's his job. He's a, a an avid uh, avid reader, and you know, making sure that we're reading the right stuff uh, that's going to grow us. You know, that's that's key right there. But just on that, to, just uh, as an as an aside, do that little audit. You know, I and O. And look at how few O's there are and how many I's there are. Yeah, I'm going to try that. Although I, have a, I already have a good idea of which uh, which letter I'm going to see more of. Yep, I, <laughs> I do too. I'm looking at mine today. And, you know, like I consider this, you know, doing these podcasts to be working on my business just because of the leverage point that it has. 
But a lot of the other stuff, like filling out a W-9, I've got to fill out a W-9. That's working in my business, you know, and that's something that I, I was like, why did I write that down? And I typed my, to Beth this morning, my VA, and I said, hey, Beth, would you please fill this out? Said, sure. Okay, good. You know, and it starts to think, okay, I can, uh, there's, there's people that can do this a lot better and faster than I can. Right. All right, Brooke. Well, I am excited to hear about your trajectory. I'm excited about where you've come. Golly, you've you've done a lot in a lot in a year in a very short period of time. So kudos to you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. You're welcome. So I hope to do a follow up with you when you've overcome this challenge and or seize this opportunity. Let's be positive here. And uh, moving on to the next one. Yeah, I'd uh, I'd love that. Thank you. Thanks for having me, and thanks for all your help. I I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. That is Brooke Swan. And if you would like to find out more about Brooke, uh, you can go to Clarity Bookkeeping. Let's see here. Uh, what's what is it? Brooke at ClarityBKPG.com, right? B R O O K E. All right. So that's where you can find out. Uh, or get in contact with uh, Brooke at Clarity Bookkeeping LLC. And if you would like to see the show notes and all the other goodies that are related to this show, as well as any of the other shows, please go to ilovebookkeeping.com. Again, you can apply to be a guest on that page, as well as find out about all of our courses. Until next time, I just want to say thank you for being a great bookkeeping professional. And thank you for being a, a listener, a dedicated listener to I Love Bookkeeping. I'll see you next time. Listen, if you would like to hear more great conversations just like today's, then I want you to head on over to ilovebookkeeping.com. There, you're going to find all of the shows, the notes, and some other great goodies that we have for you there. Now, if you'd like to be a guest on the I Love Bookkeeping show, there is a link that says Be a Guest. Go in there, and we'll walk you through the process of getting on the show. And finally, to discover more about our programs, go to the courses page on the ilovebookkeeping.com site. There you have it, another great episode of I Love Bookkeeping. Thank you for being a proud listener, and thank you for being a bookkeeping professional. Enjoy the rest of your week. I love bookkeeping. Ah! Here's a little shout to all.